Good morning. Welcome to Hickory Flats Methodist Church. Uh, I'm Matt Nelson. I'm Laura Dickerson. We're your ministers here at the church, and uh, we're glad to be with you today, though we're not with you today. Um, Hopefully we'll be able to take advantage of some good technology and do some things in these days ahead to be thoughtful of one another and caring in this time as we certainly have a very unprecedented and a very unique situation in our community today. Um, I want to just remind you one of the reasons why we've chosen to do this online worship and some of these options is because we realize it's helpful to uh, be mindful of our community. We've already heard reports of people in the area who have, um, have cases reported and even though it's not widespread spread necessarily here in the Cherokee County area. We want to be thoughtful to people. Uh, I've spoken to a number of folks who are concerned about uh, their own well-being, people who have a compromised immune system or other illnesses and diseases, and we just want to make sure uh, that we're not contributing to the problem. As we mentioned recently, do no harm. Uh, How can we take care of and love one another? So um, also um, our bishop from the North Georgia Conference has asked all of our United Methodist churches across the conference to find other creative ways to be in ministry at this time, not to back away and isolate ourselves, but to find ways to be in ministry in creative ways. This might be a whole new day for the church, which is pretty exciting. Uh, A little different but exciting. So um, certainly something good. Please look through um, any email communication that we do send from the church. Um, We have been doing our best to communicate with everybody as much as possible. One of the things in particular we've found is sometimes those emails go to people's junk folder or other things. It just kind of gets hidden. Um, But we've been trying to communicate the best we can. Um, But we'll have some other opportunities to, to take care of one another. A couple other things just to remember, um, you know, it is something to be think mindful of. Not very few of us have ever experienced something like this uh, in our lives. And so to have the opportunity to realize that this does affect many, many lives. As news reports have already come out, over 150,000 people worldwide have been affected by this, fortunately. Uh, about half of those have recovered, have been care, and have been given care and been able to respond, which is good. Um, but almost 6,000 lives have been lost. So we do realize this is serious and we want to be thoughtful. Um, so hopefully there'll be some creative ways. Today you're seeing with this technology, ways that we can reach and be in communication with one another. Uh, especially through Facebook Live, you're able to make some comments and communicate with each other. Hopefully we'll be putting out some opportunities and ways to pray for each other. Uh, we've already been brainstorming and have a conversation this afternoon to do more of that. Yeah. Um, one of the things we're dealing with technology is we're using something called Zoom meetings to allow people to still meet and talk together. Matter of fact, one of our classes this morning has already done that and they're in conversation and able to connect but not connect so it's good so we're glad for that this morning so today is going to be a little bit different worship experience a little different expression uh, but actually this is an old practice as we were talking earlier um, reading scripture and being an intentional prayer and sort of guided through that rhythm is something the church has done for a long time. We've kind of changed worship. So here's an opportunity today to do worship in a different way. And hopefully some of the songs that we will offer and the videos and the prayers might be something you could use uh, even in your daily life moving forward. Um, so let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship and um, let's, let's begin today. Yes. So if you would... Join me as we uh, call out our praise and prayer and begin this worship time together. O oh Lord, open our lips. And we shall declare your praise. And if you would join me as we hear and sing along with blessed assurance. Here all the day long. Even in the midst of confusion, perhaps. But the Lord is good and he is always with us. If you would join me now in a prayer of thanksgiving. New every morning is your love, great Father of light. And all day long you are working for good in the world. Stir up in us desire to serve you, to live peacefully with our neighbors, and to devote each day to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. Amen. 
Some of you may notice that on our bulletin every week, we have scripture verses that are listed on the front, and uh, those are sometimes different than actually what's being preached or read. And uh, those are the lectionary texts that are provided for every Sunday, and actually there's a daily reading of the lectionary. And so this morning, we're going to be a part of an ancient practice of reading those texts and listening and then reflecting upon them. And so Laura and I will read these texts and give you a little time just to reflect and hear and then take them and allow them to sort of nurture and saturate your soul. Uh, So this morning our first text comes from Exodus chapter 17. I invite you to hear these words and then reflect for a moment. The whole Israelite community broke camp and set out for the Sin Desert to continue the journey as the Lord commanded. They set up their camp at Rephdim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people argued with Moses and said, give us water to drink. Moses said to them, why are you arguing with me? Why are you testing the Lord? But the people were very thirsty for water, for water there, and they complained to Moses. Why did you bring us out of Egypt? To kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst. So Moses cried out to the Lord, What should I do with these people? They're getting ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people and take some of Israel's elders with you. Take in your hand the shepherd's rod that you used to strike the Nile River and go. I'll be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Hit the rock. Water will come out of it, and the people will be able to drink. Moses did so while the Israel's elders watched. He called the place Massa and Meribah because the Israelites argued with and tested the Lord, asking, Is the Lord really with us or not? hear these words from Romans 5, verses 1 through 11. Therefore, since we have been made righteous through his faithfulness, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have access by faith into this grace in which he, we stand through him and we boast in the hope of God's glory. But not only that, We take pride in our problems because we know that trouble produces endurance. Endurance produces character and character produces hope. This hope does not put us to shame because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. While we were still weak at the right moment, Christ died for the ungodly people. It isn't often that someone will die for a righteous person, though maybe someone might dare to die for a good person. But God shows his love for us because while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So now that we have been made righteous by his blood, we can be even more certain that we will be saved from God's wrath through him. If we were reconciled to God through the death of his son while we were still enemies, now that we've been reconciled, how much more certain is it that we will be saved by his life? And not only that, we can even take pride in God through our Lord Jesus Christ the one through whom we now have a restored relationship with God.
And our reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 4, familiar story. Jesus had to go through Samaria. He came to a Samaritan town called Sychar, which was near the land Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus was tired from his journey, so he sat down at the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to the well to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me some water to drink. His disciples had gone into the city to buy him some food. The Samaritan woman asked, Why do you, a Jewish man, ask for something to drink from me, a Samaritan woman? You see, Samaritans and Jews didn't associate with each other. Jesus responded, If you recognize God's gift and who is saying to you, Give me some water, you would be asking him and he would give you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you don't have a bucket and the well is deep. Where would you get this living water? You aren't greater than our father Jacob, are you? He gave this well to us and we drink from it as he drank from it himself, as did his sons and his livestock. Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks water that I give them will never be thirsty. The water that I give will become in those who drink it a spring of water that bubbles up into eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I will never be thirsty and will never need to come here to draw water again. Jesus said to her, Go get your husband and come back here. The woman replied, I don't have a husband. You are right to say, I don't have a husband, Jesus answered. In fact, you've had five husbands, and the man you're with now isn't your husband. You've spoken the truth. The woman said, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you and your people say that it is necessary to worship in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Believe me, woman, the time is coming when you and your people will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You and your people worship what you don't know. We worship what we know because salvation is from the Jews. But the time is coming and is here when true worshipers will worship in spirit and truth. The Father looks for those who worship him this way. God is spirit and it's necessary to worship God in spirit and truth. The woman said, I know that the Messiah is coming. The one is called Christ. When he comes, he will teach everything to us. Jesus said to her, I am the one who speaks with you. Just then, Jesus' disciples arrived and were shocked that he was talking to a woman. But no one asked him, what do you want or why are you talking with her? The woman put down her water jar and went into the city. And she said to the people, come and see a man who's told me everything I've done. Could this be the man who is the Christ? They left the city and were on their way to see Jesus. Now, in the meantime, the disciples spoke to Jesus, saying, Rabbi, eat. And Jesus said to them, I have food to eat that you don't know about. The disciples asked each other, has someone brought him food? Jesus said to them, I am fed by doing the will of the one who sent me and by completing his work. Don't you have a saying, four more months and then it's time for harvest? Well, look, I tell you, open your eyes and notice the fields are already ripe for harvest. Those who harvest are receiving their pay and they're gathering fruit for eternal life so that those who sow and those who harvest can celebrate together. This is a true saying that one sows and another harvests. And I've sent you to harvest what you didn't work for. Others worked hard and you will share in their hard work. Many Samaritans in the city believed in Jesus because of the woman's word when she testified, he told me everything I've done. So when the Samaritans came to Jesus, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there two more days. Many more believed because of his word, and they said to the woman, we no longer believe because of what you said, for we have heard for ourselves and know that this is one who truly is the Savior of the world.
Let our prayers be acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our salvation. Amen. The last passage of scripture for the weekly lectionary is the psalm. And today is Psalm 95, and we have a creative expression of that. Every psalm should have music associated with it, though often we tend to just read them as maybe poetry or in worship. But take time now to receive this poem, this psalm, in a creative new way. Psalm 95, 1 through 4. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before Him with thanksgiving and extol Him with music and song. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before Him with thanksgiving and it's all Him with music and song. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. So as we listen to these scriptures today um, and we hear God speak through the word once again, words that are ancient yet very modern and bring us into the future, we realize that we're in some very unique times in this pandemic that's before us and the disruption that's occurred in our lives, um, changing our schedules, changing our life. You know, I can't help but make the comparison to Lent, and I am not at all saying that this virus has been caused by God. Matter of fact, just the opposite, I believe, that it's just part of our world, but how we respond to it speaks. And the season of Lent is a disruption. It's the disruption of the way we live and what we do and how we relate to one another, and more importantly, how we relate to God. Um, you know, a few of us have dealt with something like this. And I think sometimes Lent is one of those powerful gifts that comes to us as a way to deal with something different. Now, people who have gone through cancer treatments and other things, even bone marrow transplants, they understand what it's like to be isolated. They have to be mindful of their, their immune system. 
Lent is a time to be mindful of our spirits and be mindful of those relationships that nurture and, and speak to the heart of who we are. You know, I'm reminded of key verses from Scripture at this time as we think through all that's going on in our community. Some verses from the prophet that speak to, do not fear, do not be dismayed, for I am your God. That's who we're supposed to trust in in the midst of all these things that seem to be unnerving and unsettling to us. Uh, even in 1 John 4, perfect love drives out fear. Uh, and it's that love that we're seeking to live into and be in these days. These scriptures this morning that we read, um, how timely and appropriate, and even though it's different than our theme for the season of Lent right now, very appropriate as they speak to, think about the, the text in Exodus. Here's Moses and the people wandering in the wilderness. They've gotten thirsty. They're longing for refreshment. They need that water. And they argue, they complain, they're restless. We, too, we get restless. We, we wonder, is God here? Is God available to us? As the very end of the text brought forth, uh, can we really trust that God's going to provide for us? And I think it's powerful to remember in the journey, along the journey, God provides those places, those miraculous stones that bring forth water, wherever we are in the wilderness. What might that look like for our day now in our culture. And then the text from Romans, how appropriate to ask this question of it brings us through these trials and struggles to a hope. We know it's through those journeys that we move and ultimately the goal is a restored relationship with God. That's what this is about. The season of Lent is peeling back these layers to get to the core of where we are in relationship with God. What connections now are different. Um, and, you know, sometimes we need to pull back those old tried connections with God and with one another to find a new space and a new place of restored relationship. And I think that's part of what this question asks us. How might these relationships be different? What, what are they looking like? And we can easily just get in our ruts and our routines of how we do ministry and how we do life. And sometimes we need to ask new things. And that's brings us to the gospel text. I mean, here is Jesus walking his journey. He sits beside a well. It's the heat of the day. And this woman comes there. It's a familiar story, but one of the things that stands out to me is she is the fringe of her society. She is that edge that doesn't have access to most of what society offers. And we're about to get into that place right now within our community. People who don't have access. What might it look like for us to engage in thoughtful and new ways? Um, here we are in this worshiping in a new and different way. Not on that mountain or this mountain, but a new way in spirit and truth. Um, Jesus invites us to remember he is the living water in the midst of all this. And so to come and engage in these new ways and new times, how appropriate. Um, you know, the powerful thing about this woman is she becomes a great witness to her interaction with Jesus, to other people. And we have that opportunity now as well in these uncertain days to be a witness to the work of Jesus in our own lives and to invite people to hear and know this story. What might that look like? Is there something new that God is up to? So um, this past week, we've been sharing some things from the church and kind of how to engage and what to do in these days. And I hope that things like this kind of worship this morning reading scripture, maybe finding videos with hymns or songs or prayers, might be other additional ways that we continue to nurture our soul and, and be about what it is to follow Jesus in these days. One of the letters that we sent out this past week reminded us to sort of attend to those three simple rules that we have as Methodists, to do no harm. That's why we're doing this this morning. Uh, we want to be thoughtful and caring to those around us. Um, we understand that Cherokee County hasn't been had a lot of reported cases yet, um, but we know it's probably coming. And so we want to be thoughtful and preventative and cautious. But at the same time, we have the opportunity to do good, to engage. Uh, this morning, uh, my phone gives me a daily scripture that comes from the YouVersion app. Uh, today's was incredibly relevant. It says from Hebrews 13, don't forget to do good and to share what you have because God is pleased with these kinds of sacrifices. It would be easy right now to hoard my toilet paper and my water and all this sort of stuff at the grocery store, but I'm called to share it and take care of one another. And I think this is an opportunity for us to do the exact same thing. 
What is the living water that's needed? Where are people are in these places of anguish? Who are those that need the restored relationship like we've heard through these texts this morning? Um, so we have opportunities to continue to do that. In these days ahead, we do want to keep space, keep that social distancing, but let's not give up the connection that we have in God's spirit. One of the things yesterday that I did come across was a wonderful poem that I want to close with, um, written by a woman by the name of Lynn Unger, uh, and she is a part of another Christian tradition, and uh, she's a poet, uh, a dog trainer, uh, kind of some other fun things that she does with her life. But as a writer, uh, she very poignantly captured something that was... um, I think spoke to where we are today. And actually, the poem that she wrote is entitled Pandemic um, and was written just this past week as we reflect. And so hear these words uh, as we consider, continue to think about these texts today. What if you thought of it as the Jews consider the Sabbath, the most sacred of times? Cease from travel. Cease from buying and selling. Give up just for now on trying to make the world different than it is. Sing, pray, touch only those to whom you commit your life. Center down. And when your body has become still, reach out with your heart. Know that we are connected in ways that are terrifying and beautiful. You can hardly deny it now. Know that our lives are in one another's hands. Surely that has come clear. Do not reach out with your hands, but reach out with your heart. Reach out with your words. Reach out with all the tendrils of compassion that move invisibly where we cannot touch. Promise this world your love for better or for worse. In sickness, and in health, as long as we all shall live. Amen. Amen. We will enter into a time of prayer. I will say a phrase and then give a moment for you to reflect and pray. And then end each phrase, I will say, Lord, in your mercy, and you may respond, hear our prayer. Let's begin. Lord Jesus, we come together as a whole community, even though we might not see each other face to face, but you see us face to face. So Lord, let us all pray together for the people of this congregation. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. Let us pray for those who suffer and those in trouble. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. Let us pray for the concerns of this local community. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. Lord, we pray for the world, its peoples, and its leaders. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. Lord, we pray for the earth that you have given to our care. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. Lord, we pray for the church universal 
its leaders, its members, and its mission. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And Lord, now together, as we say in communion with all of your saints, the prayer that you have taught us to pray. Our the Father, Father, who art, art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and always. Amen. As we go from this place of worship and of this space of listening, I want to offer you just a few words in sending and going. Thank you for joining today, and we will find more ways moving forward uh, to stay in connection like this and to stay in communication and let people know what to do. Please find ways to share this with others. Um, these recordings of this morning will be on our church website and on a YouTube channel and some other things. Uh, and we will distribute those so that people can then share uh, and offer this to others. Also, we've tried to find some ways to use technology this week. We have, some, we have a Zoom account that's allowing us to have small groups and uh, classes meet as well as committee meetings and things of that nature. And so that's something that you would like to use. One of our classes used it already this morning. Uh, please contact me uh, or the church office. Let us know and we will get you signed up. You would need to reserve that space and that time, and we'll help you figure it out. Again, we sent out a few bits of information this week about how we as a church can do no harm, do good, and continue to attend to the things that God has instructed us to do and live. And so please try to find those emails as you're able. Some people have found them going to their junk folders, uh, and they get kind of hidden sometimes. So please look for those so you, we can stay in good communication. Um, one of the things we're trying to do is be an outreach, which sounds a little odd, um, but there are people in our community who are in need and that we might have a chance, whether it's running an errand for them to go to the grocery store. I've spoken to particular mem members of the church already who they are quarantined or they have self-quarantined for concern of anything. We might be able to help one another, go run errands, do things, drive around. So if you have that opportunity, you have that ability Talk to us in the church. The serve team is going to be working on some more of that as well. We're thankful for ways people are serving. Um, sometimes just serving is, again, taking care of one another in different ways. Maybe someone this morning has come to your heart or your mind during this prayer time or these scripture readings. Maybe you can use some old technology of writing them a note. <laughs> Maybe we can make a phone call. Stay in connection with one another. It's a wonderful opportunity. Not always easy to do, but a great way to reach out. And that, speaking of that, pastoral care visits, Laura and I definitely want to be available to people, but we want to be mindful that it's really kind of more of an emergency or a safe situation. Uh, so we will um, be kind of taking those case by case. But if you have a pastoral need, don't hesitate to call me. My number is 706-627-6877. Seven zero, and you can call or text or whatever you need at any time, and we will make sure we respond to you. We want to be here for you as your church. Um, I think that's most of what I had to share. Laura, is there anything that you would want to add or share? I just want to end just saying that we love you all and stay safe and remember that God is with you. May you go in peace and grace. Amen. Amen.